Fox Sports Pueblo, 1350. This is the John Riston Show. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Let's join the voices of the pack. Jim Brooks and Joe Servi. Along with CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves head coach, John Riston. Welcome to Andy Max. It is the John Riston Show. Joe Servi is right across from me. I'm Jim Brooks. We're waiting for uh, John Riston. He's a ca- fashionably late tonight, Joe, because it is Mesa week. Well, Our favorite week of the year. <laughs> Your season's in the balance. Yes. yes. you got a few things yeah, to worry about wants right to now. get a few things yeah. in there. Yeah, well, that's all. But uh, come on out here and join us. We've already got our appetizers in front of us. They got the $5 buffet. I'm not sure what's on the menu tonight on the buffet, but $5 buffet all during the show here and for a little while after. Drink specials going on as well. We've got our meatballs. They bring us every week a little garlic bread, and they got the chicken cordon bleu bites. You know, and, and or are they just ham cordon bleu? Well, these are off menu because oh, okay. this was our this staple is last just, year. This is something they found. Well, it, and it, it is sadly. Mondo, you know, he's yeah. hey, look what I found. And when you when the chef tells you, look what I found. <laughs> Sometimes you just put your head down and say thank you. You're never quite sure of the texture. But this is this was our staple for the last three or four years, yeah. and when they were winning national championships yeah. and conference championships, so maybe the cordon bleu and cheddar pepper jalapeno Ooh. balls that they, you, they, you they, can't they, eat between break though, because if you get yeah, you get a, get a tough see, one. They mix them all together. It's like ball roulette. Yeah, you don't know what you're getting. So reach in, just close your eyes, and bite into it. See, it is Colorado Mesa and. Has the game with them this weekend. If they win and win out, your conference title again. Yeah, we we talk about having your destiny in front of you and controlling your own destiny. John said after week two, you know, we're in a nine-week playoff run now right. if we want to stay alive. And you have to win all nine yeah. to stay alive. To get two, te- two lost teams will make the playoffs. Three lost teams, not so much. No. Not especially not out west. Yeah. And so, yeah, they're in a nine-week playoff run. They won their first two in that run. And... This week's Mesa. It's there. It's a it's a day game. It's it's kind of exciting. I talked with Russ Martin. Uh, to say I had a conversation with him, but when you when you call Russ Martin, you better pack a lunch because it's uh, a <laughs> it's, it's gonna be wild. And, and I love talking with him. You know, we go all the way back to the Carney days, right? And, and he was such a integral part of how good they were mm-hmm. back in the day. And he just, you know, I asked him about the you know the Mines game because they won in double right. overtime at Mines. And you know, sometimes teams get on a run. And they win games that they maybe not should have, or maybe something had to happen, a little bit of luck, a little bit of kisma, a little bit of karma or something. And when you go back to CSU Pueblo in 14, when you go back to CSU Pueblo in 15, there's a lot of, there's a, there were a lot of games that were karma games that just, they found a way to win. And, and that's been Mesa so far. They shouldn't have won last week. Yeah, no Lewis. business winning. No business, and they did. And they probably shouldn't have won the week before at Mines. Mines. And they did. So... The, you know, that gifted season thing is kind of what I was trying to get with Russ Martin. He said, you know, yeah, I've seen that before. And, you know, look at CSU Pueblo when they want go two years ago to Western. Right. You know, how do you... you how do they win that game? You know, it's... It, it's So there's you just find yeah. ways to win, and, and the teams get on that kind of roll. But CSU Pueblo looked better last week against Highlands. I, I mean, that was a very bad Highlands team. And no offense to the Highlands people, but that was a young team that looked out of place, looked out coached, looked outplayed. And, you know, hopefully in a couple of years, the fruits of those freshmen and sophomores will right. will pay pay dividends. But CSU Pueblo did to a team like that what they're supposed to do. And they put 61 on them. They, John was, you heard him in the post game. I told him, you know, you rushed for eight touchdowns. We did? Yeah. Wow. I, I don't remember it. A CSU football team rushing for eight touchdowns in a game in the last nine years. Well, to mention Highlands, to their credit, I talked to a few people about it. I go, you know what? It's not that they didn't play hard. They tried the entire ball game. I mean, they played as hard as they possibly could. They were just overwhelmed uh, personnel-wise. A lot of freshmen, a lot of sophomores playing in the ball game. But they, by God, they scored a touchdown there on the last drive of the game. They didn't give up. They uh, finally got one in there, and uh, they were calling timeouts on defense. They were doing all they could to try to stop CSU football, but they just couldn't. And uh, I think they made, if it sounds, it makes sense, they made CSU Pueblo earn the 61 points. I don't think there were a lot of gift points in that ball game. They really had to uh, execute. Oh, without question. But that, and, but you could feel in the locker room after the game that they felt like they earned it. 
the, the offensive line walked with a little bit more of a swagger. And, right. and those guys are finally coming together. I saw them before. In fact, I pointed out to you early before the teams took the field, the offensive line was in a little circle, the starting five. And they were down there, and they were you know, kind of in their own little power circle, getting mentally right to play. And I, I hadn't seen that yet. And I was really excited to see those guys do that. I mean, they're so quiet and they're so nice. Ty McCulley doesn't say two words. Right. Corbin Feaster is a genius. He shouldn't be playing football. He's a <laughs> genius. He should be a NASA. And Keith Head, I mean, he's the biggest, goofiest, nicest lineman. I'm like, you guys need some dude, man. You got to get some attitude. But after the game, they all were just walking a little bit taller, saying, "Yeah, we just put, we just." blocked for eight touchdown runs and that yeah. for an offensive line that needed to come together that was a great thing to see and uh, they did it with that three-man committee mostly two this the cardinal got in the game late and ran well when he got in there but mostly it was uh uh you know dork and michi doing the uh hard work there and they both had uh, great there games. he is john riston showing up here we'll go ahead and get him in we'll turn his mic down temporarily while he gets his headset on here but uh, while he's doing that we'll go ahead and look at the standing we talked about how wild and wooly it was in the armac on saturday Mesa was down 28-17, 10 minutes to go in the ball game. In the fourth, yep. And they uh, score 17 points and come back and win. Uh, one of their touchdowns was on a fumbled punt or botched punt that got rolled back toward the end zone. They ended up recovering in the end zone, got a touchdown there. Even with all that, Fort Lewis had the ball at midfield but turned the ball over on down, so they lose. But uh, Mines went into Gunnison, and Western State ambushed them there, and we know how good they are. Austin Eckler was just a tremendous ball game, 300 and some yards. I mean, that was amazing. <laughs> yeah, he just took off. So Mines now sitting there with two losses. Suddenly they're, you know, they're pretty much out of the picture unless a lot of things have to fall their way to make it work now. They yeah. don't control their own destiny. Exactly. And uh, Mesa now sitting there 4-0, and but Mesa's got a win over, they beat Western State already, right? Yes. First game of the year. They beat Mines, so now they got to feel like this is the conference for them. It's on the line. They win this ball game. They're sitting there good. Oh, their back half of the schedule is way softer than their yeah, front. Yeah, so they, they they feel like this is where it's going to happen. But they do go to Azusa Pacific, or they get them at home. But that's their last game, and if they stumble between this Saturday and and the end of the season, you don't want to lose that game. You don't want to lose that late in the season with everybody starting to look yeah, at regional so. rankings. And so I I mean, after seeing what happened last week. The anything can happen is back on any given Saturday. Hey, by the way, Joe, guess whose show this is? It's John Riston's show, and he's here. Welcome, John. Well, uh, I'm glad I could be a part of the the, the Jim and Joe show. Well, we've so. talked a lot this year. We've had a lot of extra time to well, talk I, this year. Good I, and bad. I, yeah, I, yeah well, <laughs> exactly. So, uh, matter of opinion. Yeah. yeah. No, I meant good and bad time. Well, yeah, yeah the, the talk we just well, yeah. And when I was driving over, it went blank on you, too. Yeah, so well, there you that's, go. That's what that's happened. probably a good thing. <laughs> so, Coach, uh, welcome. Uh, excited. Glad to be here. Week. Yep. Next week. Big week for us. Big week coming off a very outstanding all-around team win that we had on Saturday. And uh, I, I like the direction our guys are co going. You know, two weeks ago, we, we challenged them basically about uh, respecting the game and growing. Well, three weeks ago. And I think we've done that, and um, I think we're on a, a, a building process to understand what it takes to be competitive and then put your head down and go to work, as we always said. But I didn't think we understood what it went to be co competitive early on. I thought everybody just thought they could go show up, and so, so slowly but surely we're, we're gaining on that. Well, let's talk to Joe about the game, about Highlands. I thought even though they were – the personnel wise wasn't equal to you. they played as hard as they possibly could I think with the personnel they had they played the entire game hard they even scored a touchdown late that last drive of the game but they made you guys kind of work and execute for everything you had and I thought in that ball game well yeah I, I think that um, <laughs> I've never been in a game where the uh, defense called three timeouts <laughs> or, or all really six of them because they called both the yeah. first half second half is all on defense and so uh, I think with our I think people have sometimes trouble lining up with our tight end sets, and, and especially when you only have a couple of days to prepare for it. And um, I think that created a little confusion for their, their young guys. But I sure like our young guys playing against their young guys, and I thought we, we did a nice job with that. I thought we controlled the ball, both offense and defense. My thing was start fast, finish faster, and I thought we did that. I mean, when you score 40 points or whatever it was in the first half, uh, you, you have a chance to r really 
really do a lot of great things, whether it's defense and offense. You've got to get some defensive scores, and we were able to do that. Well, the running game, again, executing very well with the uh, two-headed monster more this week. Cardinal got in there late, but it was more Amici and Dort doing the job, and uh, they both ran ran the ball well up in there, but they had some holes to work with. Well, I, I thought we were very... Um, you know, we, we talk about being on target, target on the right guy, target on the right defense if they move, what's going to happen. And I thought our receivers did a nice job of blocking, and we were able to, they were giving us the, the little bubble passes outside, you know, with the uh, people in the box. And so that created us an opportunity to spread it outside and then, you know, spread the defense, then give us some holes uh, up inside. It was kind of funny, Jim mentioned on the air, that some of those eight and nine-yard runs that, Fred Letter or Austin would get just think if number two was back there. Those are 27, 28, 30, 50 yard runs. That's that just the, the the difference of a that kind of back. Well, you know that that's the theory of it, and that's what we're going to find out whether that's the reality of it. Right. And uh, so uh, we we all kind of said the same type of thing, and we're looking forward to having. Uh, uh, Bernard back, and he is coming back in this game. Look great in practice. This yeah, he, he's he's finally I think feeling a um, little healthy. He's a little, little, you know, he goes in and out of how it feels, and so that that happens when when you have a, a sore knee. Well, the good thing about it is you don't have to worry about him running 30 times because you got those two backups or three backups behind him. You don't have to wear him out, I guess, in a ball game. You may be tempted to, I guess, if he's having a great game, but. You know, you got that depth which you've been able to build. You've always talked about that. You always got to have somebody step up, and it helps you build depth, doesn't it? Yeah, it, I think, you know, it, it's one of these things where you go and create different opportunities, but you don't know what those opportunities are until the game happens. And so those things are, are kind of defined through practice, through you earning the reps, but then you go earn more time during the game, you know, the games that are played by your production and what you do. And so I'm really happy with the, the committee, as we call it, or you guys have called it, that uh, of our backs being able to do that. But I'm really happy with the pro uh, progress of our op offensive line and, and what they've been able to accomplish. It, you know, made me laugh is after the game Saturday night, I was in the locker room and I saw Bernard there and I go, he might not get back on the field. And he gave me one of those... <laughs> it, it, it was one of those yeah right looks, but it was great because he was he was so happy. He was standing there with the other backs, and he was so excited that they were producing. And that I, I love seeing that. Yeah, I think it's you know, part of the makeup of our, our program. I would hope that you're excited for the the next man up to be able to go do his job, and whether it's your job or the next guy's job. And so it's all, all about uh, that common goal and that common. Um, checking your ego at the door and going go and having fun together. Well, and I don't know if you heard when you were driving over, we talked a little bit about the offensive line. They, they, they seemed to come together more in this game than I've seen them in years, and it was just neat to see Corbin Feenstra should be a NASA. You know, he's a genius, and, <laughs> and he's playing the offensive line, and Ty McCulley doesn't say two words to anybody, and Keith Head's the nicest guy on the planet, but it was neat to see them before the game as a unit, and then play as a unit, and then after the game, celebrate as a unit that they just blue holes for eight rushing touchdowns right and i think that um you know they're coming in there feeling their identity and and uh uh you know it's it's those guys don't say hardly anything and so uh it's it's kind of cool to get their personalities going all right we're going to take a time out right here we are at andy max come on down and join us uh, have some appetizers we got the five dollar buffet going we got drink specials Come on down and join the show. If you want to come ask John a question in person, we got the hot mic. Got the hot ready mic to go. right here, ready. And it's ready for anybody who wants to come and give a question. Your attorney's over here at the uh, bar, too. He might want to give you a question, too. Okay, cool. But uh, we'll see if he wants to come on over and give us a question yeah. later. It might be drawn out, you know, a typical attorney question. He'll be setting it up. But They charge by the hour. There you go. 671-7574 is the number to text questions. we got about five or six of them lined up already here. 719-671-7574 to uh, get a question in here to John Riston, the head coach of the Thunder Rolls. We're going to take this time out. Back with more right after this on Fox Sports Pueblo. The John Riston Show on Fox Sports Pueblo 1350. Caitlin Norton picking right up where Nate Baptist left off, just rolling us in with the thunder. Geez, Caitlin, what kind of upbringing? I know Johnny and Cheryl, so I'm, I'm not exactly sure what uh, 
Why are you so angry, young lady? Yeah, that's that's good though. I like that music. So here she we are. It works out back. hard though. You, Caitlin Norton was a swimmer. She's producing tonight, John, and she was a swimmer, a very good swimmer. But when she works out, just get out of her way. Okay, got that got that down. Sounds like it with that music. Yeah, that's right. right. John Riston show. She I'm Jim the Carpenters Brooks. next. Joe Servi. Joe Servi playing the Carpenters. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Postman That's delivering. Right. <laughs> and, of course, head coach John Reston. We are at Andy Max. Come on down and join us. Little Wayne. Uh, boy, some interesting <laughs> questions already coming in. Some some observations about different things. Uh, people are seeing different things out on the field. So just in the next segment, I'm just priming you for the next segment. There's some interesting questions already um, coming in. But if you want to get one in here, 719-671-7574. That will be our question and answer segment. Uh, that comes after the 6.30 break, but uh, we're back here. We're talking more about last week's game and looking forward to this week's game against Mesa. And I uh, you know, like we can sweep the Highlands game. We can talk a little bit more about it, but uh, we got this Mesa game. What do you got, Joe? Well, no, I just, you know, we, when, we, when we talked after the Mines game, you, you got to flush that because it was what it was. I would assume the Highlands game is the same way. Sure. I mean, it, you got to continue to grow and build and you know, we, we, we talk about building is adding strength and making sure that we continue to build on the foundation. Our foundation wasn't laid properly in our, uh, obviously, our first two games. And so we, we slowly and steady have, have tried to do the right things and laying the foundation so you can add strength to building. And that's what we talked about. So I thought, you know, I think one of the biggest things that you guys haven't really talked about was, I think, the play of our defense. Our defense really did a nice job, not only putting on pressure, we were able to contain the run, and we were moving like the defense of old, like we know and we love. And so I think our defense is the one who's made the biggest improvement of this time. And it's about, uh, we made a big deal last week about running the ball in practice, and it's carried over. And I thought we really cupped the ball, meaning cup the balls that we had, uh, the, the guys on all three sides of the, the ball carrier and the receiver. And, you know, we, we uh, uh, another pick six. We had another pick six. We also had a fumble recovery that was returned and and are not returned, but, but it gave us a chance to have one of our running touchdowns. And so I, I thought uh, the defense stepped up and played much better. Well, the uh, got a hand it. I mean, we have never seen so many runs for no gain or one yard. I think they kept trying. They kept trying to pound it in there, and they set a record for punting. So you got a lot of work on your punt block and punt return game, and finally, uh, you know, Daniel, he's, he kept he had some uh, adventures out there. John, I'm sure you had a little talk with him on some of those catches, but I thought it might have been because the score was so high that he tried a couple of those little circus catches. But he did have that <laughs> yeah. one great return. Yes. You, you think we tried to have him have those circus? Yeah, you know, catching it over your head punt? like this—that's not quite the way you catch a punt. But well, I think sometimes that uh, uh, the details of your work sometimes catch up with you and so uh i think that you can take that for granted yeah. those are one of those things you can't take for granted especially when that wind was howling a little bit and moving the ball and that, that punter was pretty good about uh ha handling and, and uh, placement of the ball and so it, it was very very important that we were able to uh he was able to maintain, but I, I thought the, the nice punt return, he finally got, put his foot down on the ground and went north and south. Went. So, you know, we, we talk about that. That's the hardest. It scares me on our punt team when that guy plants his foot and goes north and south. So, you know, it, it's one of those things that you got to get really a lot of courage and you got to have a lot of faith and we got to have a little trust in the whole thing. And he did it, and we, that was the longest punt return without a touchdown I think we've had in a long time. So I, I, I think, and then Kevin Rivers did a nice yeah. job when he came in. So it, it was nice to have Kevin, Kevin have some success uh, uh, doing that, and um, it, it was nice to have uh, Daniel back and get, get a ni nice punt punt return. All right, John, we're going to, we usually go to our questions the next segment, but Mr. Positive, you know who Mr. Positive is. He's got that stadium named after him, he and his wife, up there on the hill. 
Well, he's having shoulder surgery, by the way, tomorrow, so we want to wish him good luck with that. We hope everything oh. goes okay, Eddie. But uh, he uh, says he's never panicked all year. He's got a lot of faith in your coaching staff, and he feels like you're on that run. We talked about getting on that run a couple weeks ago. Right. This is uh, one more step into that positive run. Well, I, I think uh, I learned a lot from uh, Eddie. And Mr. Positive, he, he wrote a letter to the team last year about uh, he has all the faith in the world in us and basically was, was a just really let's go to work together but do it in a great frame of mind and and uh, I, I, he's a, a great person that I get to go to work every day and, and uh, under the Nita and Eddie the Rose and, and they're just such positive influence on, on our young people and Hopefully one day I I can be like that and, and help him and being positive and he's helped me so much in 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 that respect of just keeping a positive attitude instead of being negative Ned and or Eeyore though the sky's falling type of deal and so uh, it means a lot to me that um, I can learn from from uh, Dr. Eddie DeRose. Well, and then this Mesa game coming up. I mean, this is a ball club that seems to bring out the best in the Thunderwolves when you guys go over there to Grand Jury. I mean, you've had some pretty good success in that park. And, I mean, a couple of years ago, that was going to be the game. I think it was one of those blackout deals. I mean, they get all revved up the night game and everything. And I uh, thought, you know, every time you go to play, somebody said, this is going to be the year. Well, I think you ended up being 52-3, to three and they kicked a field goal late, which Joe and I kind of wonder, why do you kick a field goal at home when you're just to get points on the board? We, that's another story for another day. But they see you guys gear up for it. You know it's the chance to be your big, big in-state rival, besides mines, but I think Mesa is right there. Yeah, I think if you, you looked at the two programs that, um, that they've done a, a quality job of recruiting and recruit the same type of guys, and same interests, and, some like Pleville, some like Grand Junction, and so um, it, it's always going to be a competitive deal. And uh, I think uh, they're they're excited to play us, and I know we're definitely excited to get on the bus and handle a business trip. And um, but you know we we, we just got to worry about it our, ourselves and worry about this whole process of playing hard for 60 minutes. We can't get caught up in all the. Um, Alone. You know, they're, they're, they're kind of funny because they're the only team that puts a band right behind your bench. And uh, last year when we were doing it, uh, we, we kind of got it silent, but there was a lot of people harassing us, per se, fans. Right. Not not in the sense of they needed to be escorted out of the stadium, but kind of the fan sense. So, the needle. Yeah, and, and, and we kind of... Uh, kept them quiet there for a while yeah but they still and yeah but the whole thing is it's kind of a unique atmosphere playing over there versus any other place in the rmac which we love the big time stage we love the big time opportunities and we love playing big time football on those things and so i'm, I'm really looking forward to thunderwolves having a chance to keep building well, you mentioned it's a, a recruiting game. I mean, if you got guys that are on the fence, I guess, up and down the front range, where they're going to go if they're choosing to do it. I mean, this game can be important, I guess, if you're really trying to get a guy that's on the fence between two programs. They want to see you have some success against the other. Well, I, I don't think the recruiting go really as the senior is going to. I'm going to make a decision whether who wins or loses this ball game. But what it does, it, it gives you a little uh, um, chemistry of carrying that thing over about your your program and your guys that you have in it and it, it does the same thing for their guys and, and they they're trying to have a, a, a chance to beat us and they want to beat us in the worst way and they're on a, a cause and a mission and and I, I think that we, we we have a great opportunity to have a chance to go compete with them and that's all we want is a chance to go compete well mine's spent all summer for their cause game for their Super Bowl and you know Mace's had this one in the back of their minds since last year and since they got ranked now they're ranked they're excited to be ranked uh all i know is in the last six years average score 40 to 10. that's average score so you know you're going to get their best shot right just because it's their season well i, I think it the way it plays out uh, obviously it's only uh is that first half of the season and this is the end of the first half basically and, and uh, they're they're four and zero, and we're two and two. So the reality of this thing is, uh, we we got to go over there produce. <laughs> we, we we can't have any more uh, hiccups, and we can't have any more oh, uh, gimmies. And so we we've got our our uh, mulligans out of the way per se. And 
Uh, Your floss. And, and Remember that time we got <laughs> <Yeah>. the floss? <laughs> that, that, that really helped us. Yeah, John, we, we, we played on a scramble. We were 27 under. <laughs> well, I, it's because uh, we, had we had a great team. I was part of a great team. Yeah. And, the floss. And, and so, <laughs> but but th those are the things that uh, is, is part of playing competitive college football, and that's what you want. And we're, we're looking forward to that. All right. John Riston Show, we are here at Andy Mack. Still time to get on and join us. We come back after this timeout. Got our question and answer segment. If you're here in the, uh, the bar and grill and you want to come up and ask John a question in person, we've got a hot mic. It's ready. We can turn it on. And you can talk into it and ask John a question. It's not one of those tacos, right? The hot mic? The hot yeah. mic. Oh, man, i tell you what. And uh, we've also got my hot phone here. It's the new iPhone 6, by the way. Oh. Yeah, I didn't go over the 7. Phone. I went to the 6. I wanted to, you know, nice cheap, basically. But 671-7574, 719-671-7574. If you got a question for head coach John Riston. Back after this time out from Andy Max on the John Riston Show on Fox Sports Pueblo. The John Riston Show on Fox Sports Pueblo 1350. And welcome back to Andy Max, John Riston Show here on Fox Sports Pueblo. Hot Mike is ready for anybody if they want to come give John a question to start things off. If not, we're going to go out to sunny Southern California. Wow. We're all over. We're global. Kevin's out there. Global. Oh, the strike. Yeah, yeah, we got we got people on the road. We got uh, Rick, you know, Arthur, he's in Boston to watch the Red Sox take on the Blue Jays, big poppies last weekend. He hasn't checked in with me yet here, though, so I don't know if he's going to, you know, listening on his iHeart app. It's not on the seventh inning stretch. But, uh, well, they're, they're, not the, they're not playing tonight in Boston. Oh. He's kind of, he, he flew out there That's today. That's why he's not on yeah, the seventh inning Friday, stretch. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday will be in the ballpark. He's taking some tour into the... Uh, the duck tour. Yeah, exactly. So uh, the first question, though... Coming from Kevin Schreiber, uh, he wants to know where do I have it here? It's about, about the about the, yeah your uh, backup playing guard nose. is lined up. You notice a little bit at nose guard during practice. Is this something that's going to happen, or are we at any more offensive linemen that are looking for work that are going to get on the defensive line? Well, I'm sure all offensive linemen would like to play some defensive <laughs> line, and uh, and we're of course talking about Filippo Osamose. Yeah, Filippo. And uh, uh, we thought, in fact, uh, a week ago today, we, we made that experiment and tried to say, you know, we need a little more size in there. And, and uh, he went in and got, I believe, 12 snaps at uh, nose guard and then played a little bit. But he's such a big body, and he's pretty agile for being about 330 pounds. And um, so we put him to work, and um, I, I thought that uh, this week was much better than last week. And uh, tr trying to get the most of our uh, personnel, and that was, was a great big decision by uh, our defense staff. Brought it up, and uh, it's a co collaboration between both offense and defense of trying to handle that. So yes, he did, and yes, he will play both. All right. Did junior college transfer? No, he played at. Uh, he's from Long Beach Poly. Long Beach Poly. And uh, he he originally was at Northern Colorado, and he's graduated. And, but he still had a semester available and, and uh, thought he'd want to come down and play a little bit. So yeah, that's good. what happened. All right. Now, speaking, you're talking about coaches. One of our listeners noticed there's you got some new personnel along the sideline helping out the receivers. It's the Coop Show. He's back. Now, <laughs> yeah. how much is he helping out? What's his role? And uh, what can we expect? Well, we, we, we brought him back uh, the very first game as our honorary captain and our honorary coach. And, so uh, he called me the week before. He says, you know, I'm having trouble finding my calling, and I'd like to try coaching. And so I said, well, we, we need some help down there. And uh, sure enough, it's a great fit. And he, he sure thinks he's hit, a, hit his passion, but he, he didn't realize he, he, he didn't know how, realize how many hours you work instead of just going to practice, taking a nap, going to class. And, but he's done a nice job of rolling his sleeves. And, and uh, he's got a great demeanor. He's got great energy. Uh, he's always got a smile on his face. And um, I'm glad to have a, a ex Thunderwolf Wolf still, still be with us. Then we got another uh, listener checking in, wants to know, it likes the honorary captain deal. You mentioned Coop was one of those. And wants to know, uh, they enjoy that. They want to know how it's selected. And do the guys come in for the week, or do they just come in for that day, or they just happen to be around, 
or do you send out a special invitation for him? Tell us about all the procedure of bringing in the honorary captains. Well, you know, uh, uh, Craig Ward and I, we, we go through and try to decide, you know, who's available, who's not, and sometimes we have to make a few calls based on their schedule and, and where, um, it, whether they can make it down or not. And so my, I wanted to uh, really... When we started this, we've done it from day one about starting uh, and, and bringing, uh, tying the past with the future, the present and the future, and try to tie that all together and try to connect the dots for these guys going through what are, uh, their next 40 years and, and try to bring the old guys. Because there was a 24-year hi hiatus, and so there wasn't a lot of that um, – following and that tradition that ever happened so we were able to do that and bring up the alumni and and try to help support that and um it's one of those things i, I think that it, it, if it just keeps going and keeps building it, it i think everybody thinks it's an honor and last week we had uh paul brown browning and uh he did an absolutely great job but the one of the best ones was the week before scotland you know, scotland coil from uh, longmont that was a starting center on the national championship team and uh he, he and his wife portia came down and he gave a great talk he talked to the guys about uh, the work and what happens and he has two fond memories and that was one of those things during uh uh, off season in our dirty dozens, and he remember me making him do about 100 up downs, and it was a funny story. He did a great job of tying that all, all together. All right, Joe, I got a question for us here. They want to know, the listener wants to know where we're going to be having cocktails Friday night when we get to Grand Junction. Oh, they don't understand that we work for a living. That's right. We will be on the air live TV Friday night, right? And we will get up bright and early Saturday morning before the sun. <laughs> exactly. Head west. Meet up with the Thunderwolves in Grand Junction about 11 at Stoker Stadium for the 1 o'clock kickoff. What's that game we're doing Friday night? Some, oh, some high school oh. marginal that's, battle. That can, that's you guys. That's your, your side. Oh, that's right, because you're Mr. Central. Yeah, my so. line already happened. You guys. South and east in the battle for the cannon. And, and you, what's, what's kind of funny is we don't know how to pick that one right now. Yeah, it's, it's a, a tough game. Flip a coin. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of nervous about those guys asking you those questions when I haven't received anything from Abigail and Madison. But, I know. Where are they at? They haven't I'm checked in yet. I have uh, homework or a, a open house tonight or something. I, I hope Dad did. Could be a choir him. concert. Could be Ground anything. from the John Riston. <laughs> you, 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 they took that away. Their privileges are gone. Right. The, the, the thing about the honorary captain, just going back to that, is you're, some of your best interested or most ardent fans right now are the alums from the 80s. You know, in the early, late 70s, and that's what's kind of neat is tying them together. But you're to the point now where those guys from 2008, 2009, 2010 should be starting to filter in now right. and be around the program more. Are you seeing that? Yeah, it's kind of, um, you know, we, we, it's just one of those things that we have this list and we're trying to go down it and trying to honor everybody. And I think everybody that has an opportunity and are looking for if it fits in their schedule and uh, they, they'd love to come be a part of it, but I, I know we get a lot more people coming down and, and following the games, and there's more people on, on our sidelines to be able to do that. That's like SC down there. It's That's like the it Coliseum. Should, it should be. Everybody's got a sideline pass. Well, we are the real USC. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We used to be the real USC. Right. Right. Used to be Colo is what we used to be. Used to so spell it out there. Uh, when do the coaches start watching film for your next opponent? Do you go to work Saturday night, or do you actually get some rest and then go to work Sunday morning, and who does all the film? Break. I guess you probably have a staff like you used, but I maybe you had guys that put it together. And then when do the coaches start viewing it? Well, I, I think, you know, we, we have a couple of young GAs that Kyle Mousebrecker for the defense and uh, Luke Munster Tiger and DeAndre Cooper. And so they're already starting to break down Adam State. And we try to break down four opponents. And it, it takes two hours almost to break down an opponent. And. Um, so they, they're starting on, on next week's opponent right now. Uh, as a staff, uh, individually, we're, we're in Sunday morning by, you know, 10, uh, 9.30, 10, 10.30. And, you know, we, we work through Sunday night till 8.30, 9. And, and, and then... Uh, so you don't sit there and watch Jim and Terry and Howie on Sunday morning? Who? <laughs> 
Good answer, Coach. There you go. Ooh, yeah, Good that's, answer. You know, the pregame show on Fox, like all the rest of us do. I was just oh. curious. Okay. I, I have a question for you, Coach, and this is just a – some of you didn't mention it. You, you've been home for three weeks. You're, gonna, you're finally going to go on the road with this with this team. Um, last year's team and even the year before, they were great road teams. Yeah, and a lot of these guys like to get out on the road because the distractions, the tickets, and whatever. Is, what do you, with such young guys, are you worried about this team on the road? You know, um, I, I don't know. I, I, I think that if we haven't learned our lessons from our first road game, then um, I haven't got my point across. Okay, <laughs> right. so uh, I really believe that. Um, I don't know if we traveled bad or uh, mine's still on. You know, I, I, don't, I can't do anything about it. So I'm, I'm not worried about it, Joe, in, my, in a sense. But uh, what I can do is tr have them understand this is a business trip. And I started this from day one. And it, this is a business trip. And we're on, on, on a uh, – when you go on a business trip, you have a plan you put together and you have a mission. And you got to accomplish all those things with those goals to try to get all that done. And that's what I've tried to stress from day one when we met with them on Monday. So um, I'm, I'm not worried about it. We're going to a hostile crowd. They're going to be fired up, ready to go. And uh, our special teams meeting here. And then we'll, we'll leave about uh, – uh, we'll go to Golden Crowd and, and put a feed bag on. And get somebody to eat, get on the bus. We'll probably roll out of Pueblo about 2.30. All right, there you go. Thanks, everybody, for your questions each and every week here on the there, John Riston Show. There's no Abigail they, Madison. They didn't check in. I guess they, it's like Joe said, they must be hiding under a rock somewhere. They were, they, they got grounded. They got the shut out. So show. maybe they're listening, and we'll check in on the uh, other side of this break. But uh, we'll come back. We'll check in on that. If not, we're going to shame them. I'll put together a little, you know, a little audio clip, put it yeah. on Kevin's page, say, hey, where were the girls? this week we want the questions I, I, john's despondent i know i, I, I feel bad too it's, he's it's, despondent but we're going to try to gather ourselves we're going to come back in a couple minutes we're going to talk about this week's opponent while we <laughs> console ourselves right after this this is john riston show on fox sports pueblo john riston show on fox sports pueblo 1350 and Welcome back to Andy Max, our final segment of the John Riston Show tonight. And we've got two more questions, John. I, the one I forgot, Uncle Charlie checked in with me earlier today, and it was buried in my uh, text file, and I remembered it the last minute here. First of all, he says, congratulations. Thanks, this is, Charlie. This is Tundra's uncle, you know. Right. Uncle Charlie. Congratulations. Congratulating you about the victory in dominating fashion. Also wants to congratulate the team on that 3.0 grade point average as a team. Yep. Very proud of that. Also wants to know about Bernard McDonald. Will he play this week and how good is he going to be and what can we expect from him? Well, I hope he's as good as good as great as he can be like we all know. Uh, I think that's the, the case. Uh, he, he practiced pretty well. We practiced him a little bit last week. He might have been able to go last week, but we decided to, to make sure we were safe with him and, and um, so we're, we're going to hand the ball to Bernard and let him go do his thing. Well, Madison and Abigail they just wanted you to be in suspense. They've checked in. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, just, during the break, I, here, they, they brought I, it in. My, my mojo's back. We yeah. got the mojo. Is Coop the good luck charm they want to know for this week? And how is it, <laughs> how is it just having his mojo back on the bench? I, I tell you, it, it's really kind of cool. I'm glad, you know, we mentioned uh, Coop before in the show, but uh, he's he's got an infectious personality, and he, he he was a hard worker himself, and uh, and so he's trying to help all those young guys and, and and the guys that can relate to him and where he came from, and so I I, I want, uh, I'm hoping DeAndre Cooper's our good luck charm because that means that, that we got someone special and we're, we're going to have a great season because of that all right let's move on to mesa that's your opponent this week they lead the conference they're four and oh they're ranked now nationally they're feeling really good about themselves john i'm looking at a few things about their ball club though they're being outgained by their opponent should there be alarms for them or are they gonna or is that just something they're finding ways to win are they this good or what's going on with this ball club when you look down and you uh, analyze them and break them down? Is it just a ball club that's on a good roll here and is taking advantage of some good breaks? Or are they just going to get better and I better think, as the uh, season goes on? Mace is, a, one, a, a very well-coached team. I think, two, 
they they know what they want to do offensively and they create numbers. And and three, they got outstanding quarterback with outstanding receivers. And uh, Sean R- Rubicaw got hurt in our game and he's come back. And uh, our game last year, and he he's a he's absolutely a, a warrior as a quarterback. He's done a lot of great things, and uh, he he's. He's a leader of that team, and then uh, the, the Moon Kid and the, right. uh, the brothers uh, Brooks or um, Brown. Right? Brown, excuse me. I knew it started with the B and O. Justin and John uh, or yeah. Josh. And uh, the Brown uh, brothers are, are outstanding, and um, I, I think their offensive line. You, you know, they're kind of like us. They have no seniors in the offensive line, and so, but it, you, you, they're really tall and long, and they're lean on, on this, and so. Offensively, I think they're gaining strength as I see this. I think defensively, they they lost the uh, the guy that was the preseason uh, uh, all Amer or defensive player of the year. He didn't have a chance to play because something happened, and then yeah, they, they lost him immediately. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a tough way to lose a guy. Well, no, they, they voted him offense defensive player of the year, and then the first thing they get up and said. Uh, He's ineligible so, for the I, year. So I think defensively, they uh, they lost Tommy Sanger, the line, right, big right, linebacker. Right. He got hurt his knee in preseason camp. I believe that's when it happened. So I think they they got some guys that are there that are playing very well. But I I, I personally think this is the best Mesa team that will we have faced. I think that because. I, I, they're finding ways to win ball games where in the past I don't think they they've been able to right. do that. And sometimes that that's the the luck and the bounce of, of playing the game. The ball goes this way, uh, the block and the back re- reads it the you know a certain way. And so I I really believe this this Mesa team's on a mission. I think it's got great character. I, I think that what they did last week and find a way at Fort Lewis where. I, I know a uh, uh, level team didn't find a way to win right. there, and I, I know how hard it is to play down there. And so, to their credit, they they did find a way to get, get that done. And so, I think their kicking game is outstanding. And uh, so, it, it, it's a one of it, this is the best overall Mesa team that that we will face, uh, have faced. Yeah, I think you got to go into the ball game looking. They gain a lot of yards. They've been giving up a lot of yards, but. You've got to find a way to shut them down a little bit because you can't count on going in there and running up 500 yards against them. You're going to have to find ways to shut them down a little bit. No, I, I think that uh, you, we got to be really true to what our, our, our core values of this thing is. We got to be have a little trust in, in our plan, and and we and then we got to have our, our kids have the belief without evidence going through. But the biggest thing is that third quality is that we got to be patient in this game, both patient both defense and offense. In, in, in special teams, and so we we got to make sure that we, we do all those three things, and, and it, it should be one heck of a competition. I just hope we have grown enough. You know, I, I believe that I'm, I'm I'm worried about our growth. I'm worried about uh, all the things that we got exposed the first two weeks, and and this is a worthy opponent. And 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 have we grown enough? And, and have we learned? And and I, I I'm, I'm saying. The green arrow's up, not a red arrow down. And I, I like the direction of where this Thunderwolf team's going. R- Russ Martin paid you and, and Hunter and the staff the, one of the great compliments, saying that I don't care what what the records say, you have to be ready for a, a John Riston coach team. And I, I think going back to his days at Kearney, you'd say the same thing about him. And, and, and they've finally got something going a little bit it took him a little while sure I, th- I think you know it, it's your your chemistry of a bunch of guys coming together and this year they found a way and you know, you know what really helps your, your chemistry is winning oh yeah winning yeah, I mean, kill, it, yeah. Exactly. it's a good so, good call so you, you really find out what uh, you know everybody's going good when things are going good you hear, heard me say that and so uh, they responded through adversity last week and so that shows a mark of a team that has a core substance to them about making plays and so it, this is going to be one heck of a battle I, I know they're looking forward to having a chance to uh, compete against us I, I know their guys have said they, you know, they have beat us for a long time and you know and, and all that stuff you throw out the window when you get a chance to go compete Against a, a great opponent, but all the all the 
philosophical parts of side. What do you got to do to beat that team? Well, I think number one is that we got to play packed football, and that means that we can't turn the ball over and we got to get turnovers. We can't have foolish penalties, and then we got to go have fun and enjoy playing a physical style that we've lined up to play. If we do those three things, Joe, I, I, th I think that gives us a chance to find a way to go win it in the fourth qu quarter and play with great, great intensity and play together. All right, we're looking forward to it. We'll have the ball game for you right here on Fox Sports Pueblo. Remember, it's a 1 o'clock kickoff from Grand Junction on Saturday afternoon. We'll be on the air at 12.30 with the pregame show. Joe and I will be there ready to bring you this game. Caitlin Norton's been our producer and engineer tonight. Done a great job. For my partner, Joe Servi, for the head coach, John Riston, for everybody here at Andy Max and our entire audience, good night, everybody. Go Pack. Thanks for listening to the John Riston Show on Fox Sports Pueblo 1350. Tune in again next week at the same time for all things CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves football. Only on Fox Sports 1350. ACCY Pueblo.